Season's greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're going to be taking a look at a keyboard that almost flew under my radar until MonsGeek, the sister company of Akko, reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to take a look at this port. Now this is a $99 CNC aluminum kit with QMK5. If this keyboard delivers on its promises, the game has just changed. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, just for those wondering, I am using a different microphone. So if you have any issues with my voice or anything, let me know. I've switched to a lapel mic because I tend to move around a lot and then I'm not able to position the camera where I want it to because um, I have a mount that both holds my camera and the mic that I use for sound test that I was using for also my, my audio, my speaking. But now I should be able to get much better angles as well as retain my voice. I think this, from my test so far, it sounds pretty good, but I do need to hear your guys' feedback. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is it too low? Is it too high? Does it work? Does it not work? Let me know. I wanna make sure I'm doing videos that, that deliver. All right, so let's open this nice big package up and see what we got by taking this out let me just to see All right. set of grams 2155 grams right off the bat so over two kilos $99 so material wise I think we've already reached it we haven't even opened the box yet but I don't want to get too excited. I have heard a couple of sound tests that kind of, I don't know, maybe it was the microphone, maybe it was the conditions, but I don't know. I don't want to make any prejudgments. I want to go ahead and figure it out for myself because we'll see what it's like stock and then most likely we will come back. Although I think, do think we do have to open it. Um, and just so you know, this one is the U.S. version. There are minor differences between the U.S. and the international version, which I will be going over shortly. All right, so got a nice, well-packed keyboard. And just so you guys know, um, the mod series from Akko, remember how they said this is from a studio? Apparently this Mons Geek, Monster Geek, is that studio that made the mod series so if you like the mod series there's a good chance that you're going to be happy with this but not having to use the Paco cloud driver it's nice now this um tape pcb i think this is only for the u.s version i have to look at the email they sent me that uh, gave me uh, the specs now we do have a nice coiled cable this is the same cable that comes with the mod series keyboards i mean exactly the same it's funny because I use these as my data. I like a coiled non-connector type USB-C cable because it reminds me more of retro nostalgia. But so it does have a nice, this is a rubberized, but it has a nice coil. And it's probably a, let's say a five footer. All right. And then we've got the screw and stabilizers, which are not installed. So there's a little bit of work that we have to do, but but I'm going to assume that this is probably saving them enough money to get us the keyboard at this price. So for that, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to set these aside for right now. Go ahead. Okay, we've got a manual. Oh, and we've got, these are the pads for the screw and stabilizers. And Packaging is extremely similar to the mod series. We've got the owner manual. See, it's QMK. Actually, says all right. right. So it's already programmed that the function key and the knob will change the lighting effects. That's pretty cool. Pre pre programmed like that. But it tells you some of the um, oh, okay. You know the functions that it has right there. Light saturation, lights on and off, and then more 
could be programmed using VIA. So we have got an open source VIA QMK keyboard that comes already with the tape mod. Comes with a coiled cable, my preference type of cable. I know not everybody. Some people just kind of have that Lima 75% CNC keyboard. She is sexy. And this is, I mean, it feels solid. It feels super, super solid. Right, so let's just take a look at the, the board real quick. Now we've got, looks like pre installed. Um, Feels like PE foam. I don't think it's pouring on. So pre-installed PE foam. And it looks like it would accept um, plate mounted stabilizers, but since we have screw in stabilizers, we're gonna go ahead and get those in there. And we may as well do the tape while we're in there. We see we have a polycarbonate plate and out of the box actually. I mean it's not a crazy amount of flex, but it's more flex than, say, the GMMK Pro was out of the box, that's for sure. And then the knob, I like it. It's a, it's a decent size. It feels hefty. It doesn't feel like it's going to blow away with the wind uh, because that black part of it does feel like it's metal. It's a light metal. I'd say it's a aluminum problem. Let me see. Yeah, it's probably an aluminum knob since... It's not magnetic but it is nice and it looks nice it's not tiny that's one one of the only complaints I have with the mod series was the knob was so tiny compared to the to the rest of the key it was like they were trying to make it smaller than the keys themselves which was just a little odd in my opinion 1706 seven grams 1700 grams almost two kilos just for the keyboard and we haven't even put switches and caps on it so I'm a big fan. I mean, if you've been watching my videos, you will probably recall me using the word um, substantial to describe things. I like things that feel substantial. The weight of something, the density of something, uh, it, to me, for a lot of things, it doesn't work for everything, but it kind of differentiates from a toy or more of a you know learning tool to a real working tool. Um, like I said, it doesn't apply in all cases. I do have some light keyboards that sound great. Uh, so let's okay. see what we got at the bottom. Looks like we have got some Allen screws, but this did come with some extra screws as well as the Allen tool. Always got to appreciate that. And uh, And let's see what we have here. The top frame is nice. It's actually lighter than I would have expected it to be. We see the pockets for the gaskets right there and the hole for the... Uh, I like that it can actually come off without you having to take the, uh, the knob off. So they fit the knob uh, with the tolerances, which is, I think, a really nice, nice touch. So, let's see, we've got some patty here. I know we're gonna have JST connector right here. So doing the seesaw method, just a little each side, that's what kind of helped it for them. All right, so we see that we have a padding for underneath the PCB. And um, how I've done this in the past is I usually put this and then put the tape on top of it, but we'll see how we'll do it. Then we've got this thin You'd be surprised this 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 thin plastic probably gets rid of a lot of the ping. You'd be surprised. I mean, uh, I had a lot of good results from using a single sheet of velvet. Somebody's trying to get a hold of them. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with what's important because we can't do much if we don't have any stabilizers on the plate. So no reason to take the plate and the PCB apart. We do have um, what looks like, I would guess maybe poron, but it could be EVA foam in between the plate and the PCB. I 
on here we have our PCB. M1 QMK US Revision 1.0. So like I said, there's an international and there's a US version. So that's the one that we're taking a look at today is a US version. So it's a decent PCB. It reminds me a lot of the CSTC um, 75. All right, so let's set this here for the second. Then we've got our I believe this is IPXE phone. That's what they're calling it. And then we have, uh, yeah, it feels like a Poron uh, for between the plate and the PCB. Now, I've already seen some mods where they replace this with just regular Poron strips, and apparently you get more flex out of it, but we're staying stock with this one. So we will be, I will come back to it and do modding videos to it. You know make her sing but for right now I just want to focus on what this is keyboard sound like with the components that it comes with Go ahead and do the screw and stabilizers first I almost did a faux pas there for a second but because I do want to use this but luckily enough That isn't going to work. This needs to go below. Alright. So we've got them on here. They are freely moving. And they are lubricated. And for the most part, this is lined up. I mean, we do have a little bit of offness here, which... I mean, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. But I think for the most part, we shouldn't have any interference when we're putting in the plates, when we're putting in the switches. All right, so we got some extras. Always nice to have extras. bit of a guide as to where I want to. Before I do this, let me not screw up yet again. I need to attach the plate with the upteenth amount of screws that it has. Got that put back together. Stabilizers come through fine. We're sticking with the default gaskets as they come. These are kind of stiff, so I guess I can definitely see why they change out the poron or change them out for the poron ones because these silicone ones are pretty. Yeah, they're pretty um, stiff. So just to make sure everything is good here, go ahead and plug this in. Nice and bright, and it came on real quick. Looks like we got a cap lock indicator. It's always nice. I'm setting it via 
the all right so yeah it's looking real good all right let's go ahead and close her up i just wanted to check out what the lights looked up like before we closed her up So here we are. This is the Monster. Mons Geek, sorry. Monster Geek. I keep thinking about how they came up with their name. I, I think it's kind of cute, but I also think it's kind of silly. Like, what are all geeks monsters? Anyway, Mons Geek M1. Sister company of Akos. First keyboard fully assembled because it does come as a kit. You do have to put in the stabilizers, though it does look like the plate will accept plate mounted stabilizers if you so choose to do that. Obviously, when you can use screw in stabilizers on the PCB, it's usually recommended because they're going to be better. They're gonna be more stable and that's what they need to do in order to avoid ticking. All right, so for today's build, I was gonna go ahead and use some of my favorites. Gazoo, uh, Boba, U4T. To me, these are the pinnacle of tactile. I love these. And since we've got a pretty nice RGB, I figured why not go with the RGB top. Uh, these are still a five pin, so we're gonna be good on here. Let's go ahead and load these up and then we'll go and see what we'll do for keycaps. And there we are loaded up with some U4Ts from Gazoo. I think this is gonna sound pretty good. Now, um, as I'm sure many of uh, you guys probably took advantage of some Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals, I did as well. Um, I was gonna buy, I think, two keycap sets. Buy one, get one free from, uh, was it the key company, I believe, but for less than what I would have paid for two keycap sets, I ended up getting five from Idobow. Now, I do have this set. This is 9009. It's a very retro set. Yes, I know it's usually it's put on beige or white keyboards, but I said, why not? Um, I have the uh, this set, but it's in an XDA profile, and I believe I have one in an OEM or Cherry profile, but I don't have it in MA. I think Ido Bao is the only company that does the MA profile. I know I have a couple other sets like the Blue Cat, and I absolutely love how it looks and how it feels. Um, even though I'm usually more of a fan of uh, kits that kind of have that sculpted tip, and these are basically flat, but I think that they're they're nice caps. Oh, no, one point two. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes we're a bit of a deeper sound profile or acoustic profile due to the depth of the keys. So, without any further delay, let's go ahead and load this puppy up with some keycaps. So here we are, the Mons Geek M1, 75% with a knob gasket mounted by a QMK keyboard. How much? $99. Now does it sound perfect? No. Does it sound bad? Nope. Does it require some mods to get to that S tier level? Yeah. Do I think that it'll get there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I honestly, I can't think of a better keyboard, even a $200 keyboard. Now, let's go ahead and plug her in and look at that RGB. We can see the RGB pretty clear, even through, I mean, obviously I've got the RGB 
uh, U4s in here. Um, but the RGB actually can be seen pretty well straight off the bat. Now, like I said, there is a tad amount of ping in there, but it's not anything that I don't think cannot be fixed with a force brake mod. But as I promised, this first video and sound test is going to be completely stock. Then I'm going to come back to it. So any changes that I make, because I've already got like three different ideas um, for modifying this keyboard to helping it achieve S tier status. But I'll always have this stock sound test to be able to compare against. But my initial impression is that this is a solidly built kit. Um, it is better than any of the mod series. I have the mod. 007 and 006 and had the 003 for a short while um, but this I mean this one weighs more than the 003 and that was an 1800 so it's south facing it's QMK via out of the box um, it has a polycarbonate plate it has uh, it's just well built it's a well built PC that sounds decent I mean a lot of people I think the way that it sounds right now, they're going to be more than happy with because the ping is very slight, although it is there. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, my impressions are that this is a great keyboard. I'm excited about getting into it and modding it and reaching that, you know, finessing that the greatest acoustic profile that I can out of this. Um, it may be with the U4 T's, it may be with another switch, I don't know, but it's definitely gonna include some dampening materials inside of hollowness and that's in the case because I think that's where the majority of the profile is going to be decided. But for $99, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, Keychron, but <laughs> I mean, you can get a V1. I mean, I know this is a bare bone, but a V1 bare bone, what, is $79? 80 bucks? So 20 bucks more and you get this bare bone? I'd get this. I mean, I prefer the sound to plastic, but I love the feel of a metal keyboard. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Monsgeek M1. The first outing from Monsgeek a company that calls itself a sister to Akko. This is a fully 75% aluminum gasket mounted kit with a knob. It MSRPs for $99. There are two editions, a US edition and a global edition. Today we are looking at the US edition. It comes with QMK and VIA, a polycarbonate plate, foam between the plate and PCB as well as under the PCB foam. It also has a layer of thin plastic above the bottom. It, this is a wired keyboard. The chin sits at 22 millimeters. The back of the keyboard sits at 35 millimeters with a typing angle of seven degrees. I'm gonna leave you guys with a stock sound test. And again, this is the Mons Geek M1. So, the international one, I guess, does not have those features. Doesn't have QMK wire, doesn't have the tape, doesn't have the Teflon pads for the stabilizer, and does not have stabilizers included. So that's the difference between the US and the international. So this is the US version. So it does come in with those uh, extras. Um, I never thought about using those silicone pads for the force break mod. I usually use the um, the thicker uh, gauze tape. This one's been beat up a bit um, because it has a little bit of like it's, it's rubbery so uh, but we'll see we'll see. Right now we're gonna do a stock sound test. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test. Please recall I am using a new microphone on this setup so if there's any issues with the audio or if you like it or if you've got any comments at all whatsoever about it, please let me know. Um, I'm trying to, I'll be setting up a new studio here after the holidays, but I'm trying to be budget conscious, but still kind of improve my setup one little piece at a time because this stuff to make good videos is kind of pricey. So 
but I want to continue to deliver content that's interesting and I will always remain honest even though I may never get slick and fancy and crazy slides and wipes and edits and everything like that I'd rather spend my time actually doing some work and helping to deliver the best portrayal of a product when it comes to keyboards so that you guys can I want it to be as close to as you guys have it in your hands as possible you know okay you know so if you've got questions for me shoot them for I mean and most of you guys will know if you ask me a question I may not get to it the same day but if I have the parts I will usually get to it I mean and I've had some odd questions like hey man what's the inside diameter of this keyboard uh, okay hold on let me check that out or how much is the, the height between this and that or if you do this and this switch what does it sound like compared to each other I don't mind honestly it just may take some time before I get to it but if you've got a question shoot it to me um, if you want to tag me, you have a question, or it's already in a comment stream and you want to tag my name, I will get to it. If you want to put a comment below on one of my YouTube videos, I will do my best to answer it. The more information you give me, though, the better I can help with. So, for right now, I want to wish everybody season's greetings. I hope everyone is having a good time preparing for the holidays. Um, I hope you're staying safe. The weather is kind of crazy in a few parts of our country right now, actually all around the world. Um, I see what's going on over on Europe and you guys are having a polar vortex over there. Minus 50 degrees centigrade. Please stay warm, folks. I want everyone to stay safe this holiday season. I send all my love to every single one of you guys for watching my videos. I truly do appreciate it. And I wish you guys the best for this holiday season and the incoming new year. Let's make this the best year on the history books. Huh? How about that? So I'll leave you guys with the stock sound test, the Monsky Chem 1. And until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.